Rivers are so important to not only the habitat, animals, and natural environment, but also to people. Rivers are typically where we get our drinking water. I've been involved with environmental restoration work almost my whole life, and all of that's led me here, having worked on a whole plethora of projects all across the world. I was motivated to come here and work on the Anacostia because I love clean water. We're here at Eastern Power Boat Club, one of four uh, boat clubs along the river. These yacht clubs were basically African-American yacht clubs. The first one was uh, Seafarer's Yacht Club, started by uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. We are an urban river. We're a small watershed. Watershed, of course, is that area of land within which all the rain that falls comes to a common outfall. How you doing, man? There's almost a million people that live in our watershed. And so we have a much higher density. We've really pushed the limits on what we've done to this watershed. So it, we're out of balance here, but we're working hard to uh, bring it back. This three box culvert is the combined sewer overflow for the Northeast uh, Boundary Tunnel. So uh, the district has what are called combined sewers, and that means there's one pipe that carries the sewage and the storm water. And so we have been discharging billions of gallons of raw sewage into the river every time it rains. Our organization uh, had an issue with that. The osprey up in the tree there. DC Water today has been under a consent decree to stop those overflows. <clears throat> Another day in paradise. Nine different locations. From the boat. Masaya Maida, who's Japanese, has been with us for 17 years. Uh, he is our water quality expert. And so every week he goes out on the river to collect a very basic water chemistry data. He has a volunteer helper, uh, a woman named Maria. We have been collecting that data for 15 years now. So we have some solid data, some trends. We really use that to build a uh, state of the river report card. Our mission is to make the river swimmable and fishable by 2025. So what's keeping us from swimming is purely high bacteria levels. Where does bacteria come from? It comes from feces, from waste. Human induced, goose, deer, avian, all these contribute bacteria to the river. So our river is impaired with nitrogen and phosphorus. Why is that a problem? Because it causes algae to grow prolifically, and that algae then consumes the oxygen in the water, and then there's not enough oxygen for the fish. So they're with the park, and they run that passenger boat. Not a lot of passengers in the boat right now. We've come so far in cleaning up this river that when people who haven't been here for 10, 15, 25 years suddenly come back, they're going, this isn't what we left. This is you know, not what we expected to see here. And the first thing that has really started to come back are native freshwater mussels. Mussels are also filter feeders. See if I can't get this up here high enough just to show you what we got here. So you can see these mussels are doing really well. Um, they went in about the size of your fingernail, and, uh, and this is a year's worth of growth. We're working with the University of Maryland to see if they'll filter microplastics out of the water as well, and we're also interested in whether they will uh, pick up and uh, bind. Uh, PCBs from the river.
So the Anacostia River that I'd like to see in 10 years would be a place where thousands of people come uh, throughout the weeks and summer months to get in the water. For me, it's a, it's a very spiritual connection to not only the river and the banks and the, the areas around it, but the clean water. Clean water is so critical to life as we know it. And I think as more people come back and recognize that, uh, they'll appreciate and admire and honor the river.